So most people will know that artificial blue light at night is really bad for your sleep quality because it suppresses your melatonin, which is your one of your most important hormones, it's your sleep hormone. Um, and what most people think is that, you know, by using a red light in the evening, that is able to increase your melatonin because instead of using the blue light, now you're using red lights. And while that is true, there's actually a more direct mechanism by which red light can stimulate melatonin production within your body. So in this video, we're going to be discussing that, and we're also going to cover a study which is going to show you some incredible results using red light therapy in order to boost your melatonin. What's up, guys? It's Nick Kutsia here, and welcome to the Mitochondria YouTube channel. On this channel, you're going to find a whole bunch of videos all about light, circadian rhythms, and health, and how you can optimize these things in order to live your best life. If you want to make sure that you don't miss any of our future content, then make sure that you hit both the subscribe and the notification bell so that you get notified every time we release a new video. So what I'm going to quickly do is just give you a brief overview of melatonin and maybe you know something you didn't know about uh, where melatonin was produced. Most people believe that it's just um, from your pineal gland, which is one of the main places that you will uh, be releasing melatonin. But melatonin is not just a sleep hormone. It's extremely important for your sleep but it's actually not what we originally started using melatonin for. Melatonin, in our whole evolutionary process, its very first function was to act as an antioxidant. So just to give you a very simple overview of what an antioxidant is, antioxidants are things in your system, you know, things like vitamin C, glutathione, which you've probably heard of before, which are able to neutralize free radicals. Now, free radicals are basically unstable atoms within your cells that can damage the cell. So if you have a lot of free radicals, you're going to have a lot of you know, inflammation and damaged cells. So as a consequence, you'll often hear people in the health industry talking about, you know, you need to boost your antioxidants, be that through taking a supplement. A lot of people will say, you know, take a vitamin C supplement or glutathione. And this is all to reduce the amount of free radicals within your system. Um, now, out of all of the antioxidants, melatonin is actually one of the most powerful. So even though we always talk about it being a sleep hormone, its primary function started out as being an antioxidant, and it still plays that role in our body today. So where most people think that melatonin is only produced in your pineal gland, uh, it's actually one of the, the best places to produce melatonin is within your mitochondria. So your mitochondria, basically because they're generating energy within your cells, one of the byproducts of this process is that they release free radicals, which needs to be neutralized. So very conveniently, your mitochondria can also generate melatonin. So the more energy you can get your mitochondria to produce, basically the more efficient you can make your mitochondria, the more energy they're going to produce, be producing, the more free radicals they'll be producing, and therefore they'll have to make more melatonin. So one of the best ways that you can improve your sleep quality is by optimizing the function of your mitochondria. And I know, you know, mitochondria, it's a buzzword you hear in, in all the health communities and everyone talks about, uh, you know, the mitochondria is the main thing you should be focusing on. And it really isn't just, you know, a cliche thing. Really, it is one of the most important aspects of your health because every single one of your cells rely on the mitochondria in order to generate energy for them. And they have so many different, you know, uh, other processes such as making melatonin, uh, which is something that's going to impact your sleep quality. And again, that's probably, you know, one of the most important things you can be doing for your health is optimizing your sleep. So what I want to jump into quickly now is a study. Um, and I'll link to the full study in the description below. But I'm just going to give you an overview of the protocol. And then I'm going to show you some of the results that they got. Um, and then I'm also going to show you how you can replicate this protocol using your own device um, in the comfort of your own home. So what they basically did with this study is they took a whole bunch of participants and for the baseline testing, they tested everyone's uh, sleep quality, which was a subjective test that they did. They tested their sleep latency, which is basically how long it takes you to fall asleep. And then they did some blood work and they tested their melatonin levels. After they'd done that testing, they divided everyone into two groups where half of them would receive red light therapy once a day for 14 days. And then the other group didn't receive any treatment. So they were the control group. After the 14 days, they came back and they retested the same three markers, sleep quality, sleep latency, and melatonin. And the results, they found that there was a 28% increase in sleep quality. There was an 83% decrease in sleep latency. So the people who had red light therapy were falling asleep 83% quicker than they were before the uh, trial started. And then this one is amazing. There was a 75% increase in melatonin. Over 14 days, that is like a drastic uh, improvement. 
Now, I just want to show you this because, you know, saying 75% is one, one thing. I think a graphical representation really shows it nicely. So on the left-hand side, you can see the red light therapy group. And then on the right-hand side, that is the placebo or control group who didn't receive red light therapy. And on both sides, the black bar represents before the trial started. And then the white bar is 14 days or two weeks uh, later. So on the left-hand side, you can see there's a really big increase um, from the red light therapy group. You know, as I said, 75%, it's almost doubled. If you look at the amount um, that that bar is increased on the left-hand side, whereas the placebo group, you can see there's no significant difference between, you know, day one and day 14. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of the specifications from this specific study, and I'm going to give you an example using one of the mitochondria devices. But before I do that, I just want to ask if you're enjoying the content of this video, please make sure that you smash the thumbs up button. That lets us know that you're enjoying content like this and feeds our motivation to make more videos like this uh, for you. So in this study, obviously you know that they did a two week trial or 14 days, but the dose that they were using every single day, that was 30 joules per centimeter squared. Now that's just a measurement of light energy. And to give you an example, using one of the mitochondria devices, you'd be able to achieve that dose within five minutes using a MyLight MIDI. That's also the red light therapy device that is pictured there on the screen. Now, if you had a weaker device, uh, you would probably see that, you know, we've seen devices that have much lower um, irradiance or light intensities than our devices. That time could go up to 15, 20 minutes. You may even not be able to get a dose in a, sh like it might actually just be too drawn out in order to see any benefits. So when you're looking for a device that you want to get, you know, really strong doses with, I highly recommend that you look at the mitochondria devices. They are some of the most powerful red light therapy devices on the market, and you're not gonna be left wondering if you're getting any benefits. If you guys have any questions from today's video, then please feel free to drop them in the comments section below. If you have any suggestions for future content, maybe there's a specific uh, benefit that you want to see, let us know. We'll try and find a study for that, and we can do the same kind of thing as today. We'll show you the results, and then we'll show you how you can replicate that protocol uh, based on the specifications of that study and then a specific red light therapy device. Other than that, guys, I hope that you have a fantastic day further, and we will chat again soon. Cheers.